Hello, welcome to another episode of Awakening with Soul Inspirational. I'm Tish, and today I want to talk about speaking with love, speaking through love. In today's climate, it just feels like there's a lot more heated rhetoric. I'm guilty of sharing in some of that for sure. Um, But I also recognize that I, I try to stop and recognize or later reflect upon some things that I may have said that were unpleasant, maybe even hurtful, maybe it's towards myself or towards others. And the more I think that we can catch ourselves, the more that we can be consciously aware of the words that we choose to use, the words that are just flowing out of us. Um, I think the more then that we can stop and make a conscious decision to speak with love or to speak through love. And love is such an incredibly powerful emotion. I have found for myself very difficult situations that I was going into that I stayed in the state of love. I just told myself, you know what? Nobody is going to, to, to crack this, this fortress of love around me. I am going to stay here. I'm not going to allow anybody the power to bring me down, to upset this love because I knew I needed to get through a particular situation. And if I allowed somebody else, their words or their actions to penetrate the state of love, the outcome in those situations would have been much different. It isn't always easy to do for sure, but when we can stay or be within a state of love, and, and you can try this at home. And if you've watched vid my videos before, um, I've kind of, sometimes I'll walk you through how to, um, you know, think of something that makes your heart spontaneously smile. Think about something loving that just fills your chest up. You can just feel the love. And again, for those watching, you know, those are my grandbabies. So I think about my grandbabies and just all the love that I have for them or my kids, how much I love them. You know, when I allow my, my, my chest and then my, my being, my soul to just fill up with this love, it is really hard in this state to say something derogatory about somebody else because I'm in this high vibration of love. I don't want to be brought down by, you know, negative words or situations. In this state of love, when we are in this beautiful state of love, love is not selfish. When we're feeling this kind of energy, then we want to share it with others. In this state of love, going to the store, we are much more apt to hold the door open for a stranger, to pick somebody's keys up if they drop them, to smile at, at the, the, the child or the, the kids as we're walking past them, or at just our fellow human beings in the grocery store or wherever our post office, wherever we may be. And then they see that smile, they feel that love. And, you know, most of us have heard the stories about, you know, it could have been for yourself. I wasn't in a very good mood, but, you know, I was at the store and somebody complimented me on, you know, my eyes or my smile, whatever it may have been. And it just brightened your day. They shared their love with you. And if that helped to pick you up, to kind of raise your vibration, that's beautiful. That's love. That's awesome. And I think about all the different times and situations in my life personally. So this video is not a video of judgment at all. Um, I'm guilty. And it's, I'm just sharing with you because I, I try to recognize when I am speaking words 
that aren't nice, when I am being derogatory towards myself or towards others. So I can stop in that moment or maybe later on I'll reflect back to my actions or the words that I spoke. Often if we are already in an unpleasant mood, we're not operating from a state of love. If life has been chaotic or maybe we got some bad news, we're operating in the energy of whatever that is. And sometimes that is really big and it's really hard for us to, to pull love through when we're dealing with something, um, depending on what the situation is. It could be something really, um, really sad or really unfortunate. So to feel that state of love, it's like it's harder to pull it up and, and to feel through and to work through with love. But eventually we can get there as we're processing something. We can eventually get back to, to that state of love or to pull those emotions forward. To, love can help us shift our perspective even. So, you know, as we're dealing with something right here, right now, that may be unfortunate, um, at some point bringing in love to switch, to, to adjust or, or change up that perspective so we can see it from another angle that, you know, maybe this isn't as bad as I originally thought that it was. Um, I can see now how maybe this would benefit me or how maybe this could benefit others. Um, or, you know, just through love, finding the silver lining within whatever situation it is that we may be handling, or, or there may be multiple situations at once that we're dealing with. The more we can allow love to surface through and to work through us, again, it's harder to to say derogatory things about others. And in today's heated climate, whether, you know, politics is a big one today. Um, it feels like this country is so divided, and yet most people I know, regardless of where they are politically, maybe they're not political at all, um, people still love each other. People still get along. They recognize they're still human beings, and they get along. So I think in these moments, you know, maybe, um, you know, if, if we talk about things on the political realm, I am definitely passionate about my views. I know a lot of other people that are passionate about their views, which are opposed to mine. I don't love them less just because they, they see things differently. I used to get very frustrated because I didn't understand how people couldn't see things the way that I see them. And it was just the realization that they are acting through their filter like I'm acting through the filter of my own life, through my experiences. My experiences led me to my particular political views. So I respect and acknowledge those that see differently. I may not understand because I didn't walk their journey, um, but I respect them for their viewpoint. If we look at the workplace, there were times where there was a company I once worked for that uh, felt very toxic to me, very low morale. Um, it, there was, it just felt like a lot of backbiting, a lot of um, just a lot of stress, a lot of toxicity. And I thought, you know, I, I was at the point where I was dreading going to work in the morning. And I realized I had to do something about it. I wasn't going to change the environment um, because it starts at the top and um, management wasn't very uh, loving. So what I did is I put out resumes and I wound up changing jobs. I went to a different company and sure, the, you know, I think every office has their issues because you have your different cliques and you have all the different personalities, all these people just trying to co-mingle with their different points of view and different levels, levels of ego or whatever. But when I switched, I realized just how much better it was over here than where I was. So I really appreciated, even with the imperfections over here at the new job, that was still so much better than where I was. So I, I really found gratitude in that space. Um, when we are speaking negatively, and, and the reason why I brought up the, the part about work is because we may find ourselves, um, 
when we are in a toxic environment that it starts to bring us down and it, it's like like it has seeped into my soul it's bringing me down because i'm watching different things going on i'm watching how people are talking about one another and it doesn't feel good so then i start feeling yucky and then i am adding to the heated rhetoric i don't want to be part of that vitriol i have been i am guilty and i'm still learning I don't want to be part of the toxicity that is just purposely tearing somebody apart. None of us are perfect. And when we get into a state of love, when we can realize I am no better than anybody else walking this earth. People may have more money. A lot of people have more money than I do. There are those that have less money than I do. I am very pale skinned. Um, that doesn't make me any better or any less than somebody with darker skin because it's kind of hard to get a little lighter than mine. But you know what I mean. Um, recognizing that we are both human beings and spiritual beings, I try, I try to look at other people as their spiritual beings too. Recognizing that all of us are one. We're all connected on this earth. Regardless of what somebody looks like, regardless of who they are in this particular lifetime, I still try to, to love and to honor each person because they aren't just a human being. They are a spiritual being. We're all connected. We are doing the best during our human lifetime that we can. Um, and so I try not to judge. I do. Um, but I do, I try not to. I try to catch myself in the middle of a judgment and somebody said to me oh i'm making an observation not a judgment well i think that could be a slippery slope too so you want to kind of watch that what is the tone as because we, we get to you get to judge you get to make observations you can do whatever you want right um but i think that when we are just simply making an observation it is there is a nuanced difference there if the energy coming through isn't one of judgment something that's more harsh or um, hurtful of others and bottom line if I am going to name call if I'm going to look at somebody and judge them and say you know they're to this or they are to that that's on me that speaks far more about me than it does about them if I call somebody a name that speaks more about me than it does about them. And in fact, I would argue, in my, at least in my opinion, when we are speaking words that aren't loving, when we are, when we are disparaging somebody, those, the words that we choose to use, they rest squarely upon our own soul. So if I am saying something really mean and nasty about somebody, that's on me. Like, that's energy of my soul. I cannot spew darkness if it isn't within me. I'm a human being. I have negative, unpleasant thoughts within me. I try to, to focus more on love than on unpleasant things. And so when I'm in a toxic environment, it's one thing to be there and try to work things out. And I think that that's really important because if you can make a difference, if you can conjure up that love, if you can just feel it and speak it, um, work with it, share it, to try to make a toxic situation healthy, that is incredible. If you find that you've tried to do this and there still things aren't, aren't, um, uh, things aren't shifting, things aren't moving. You get to remove yourself from that toxicity. So whether that's a person, whether that is um, you know, a place of work. Again, if you're in a toxic environment and, and you've done all that you can, you feel like there's nothing that you can do, work, try, you know, send out your resumes, try and um, find another location that you can go to. 
as we speak and work through love, we can make change. And then that love is what is on our souls. It is what is within us. Again, we can't share love if we don't have it. But I would argue that every person has love within them. Every person has some level of negativity within them. And especially as human beings, I think that it's, it's just part of our nature to have this a level of fear to have a level of, um, you know, or, or resentments that can build over time. If I am passionate about something, but I want to make my partner happy, therefore I give up my passion to please my partner, I'm going to grow to resent him. That will start festering within me. And then even though, you know, maybe I tried to intellectualize it at some point, that is going to surface. It's going to come out because that resentment is there. If we can address things head on and as often as we can through love, to share love, to speak love, to remind ourselves that we are love. You know, again, we can't give something that we don't have. I, I have people who come in here that are just such incredibly beautiful souls. They are so quick and so easy with their love. They just give it. But then they have a hard time feeling it for themselves. And it's like, all you have to do is open up to it and accept that love internally. Allow yourself to feel the love that you are giving to other people. If you didn't have it within you, you wouldn't be able to give it to others. So open up to it. Feel your own love. And I think the more that we can... It, you know, and actually before I go to the next point, like sometimes we can give so much love to others that we can start feeling resentful because why can't I feel it? Why isn't it being reciprocated? It, it being reciprocated. Um, so when we allow ourselves to start opening up to that divine love that is within each and every one of us, then we can replenish because love truly is infinite. So then we can, we can get that feeling of replenishment. Um, we can open up because there may be other people who have been trying to share their love with us, but we're closed off to it because we feel that we're not worthy of it. Open up. Everybody's worthy of love. Everybody. God created all of us. All of us are worthy of love. And all of us get to choose if we are going to operate from our spiritual selves or if we're going to operate from our human selves. And really, we're operating from both. But how often are we operating from, from which? You know, if I am, again, it's, 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 I, I try to look and see, am I operating more from love or more from fear and resentment, um, hatefulness? If With what I do, if people came in, if all I did was spew negativity, if all I did was, you know, complain about this and complain about that and then just begrudgingly got through a class or through a session, people aren't going to want to come back. But if that is tempered with love, compassion, honor, joy, excitement, when those things are the ones that are greater, when you're spending time around others, you know, we, we want to come back for that because that feels good. Love feels good. Compassion, joy, excitement, it feels good. And I get that some of us may not know what to do with those emotions because we've been so, so contained, so suppressed for so many years. Um, but when we allow ourselves to start opening up to that love, that self-love, the self-compassion, allow ourselves to experience joy and pleasure and excitement, then we can look upon our fellow men and women, I believe, with more respect, with more compassion, with less judgment, with more understanding. So let's speak with love. And you know, if I am, if I am with a family member, a friend, a coworker, whoever, whomever it may be, and if I'm watching them bully or put down somebody else, if they're using dis disparaging words against another human being and I laugh with them, that too is on my soul. We, each and every one of us, 
get to choose in those moments if we are going to be a leader or a follower. Is it safe for me to speak up and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not engaging in that. This isn't funny. This isn't how we treat fellow humans, fellow spiritual beings. You can be the person that helps temper a situation. Again, if, if, if it's really heated and you feel like it's unsafe for you, that's one thing. But it's a completely and entirely different thing when we are laughing with somebody who is purposely putting down somebody else. It isn't okay. It isn't okay for us to do it. It isn't okay to um, be a bystander. And Or actually, I feel like it's more complicit because we're laughing with them. So these are just my two cents worth of trying to get the message of love out there, the message of hope, compassion, the understanding that we have all walked different paths upon our journeys. I can't fully understand what somebody else has gone through because I didn't walk their shoes. No, no more than I can expect them to understand mine because they didn't walk mine. And, and that's actually kind of when we think of things that way too, um, we can also depersonalize things that way that sometimes when people are judging us is that reminder of they weren't here. They don't understand and it's okay. They don't have to, we don't have to take everything. So personally, get back into the state of love. When I think about um, people that I know personally or professionally, I may feel as though they could use healing. But I'm not going to force healing on somebody. To do so would take away their power, and that isn't loving. Sometimes love, to me, is grace. It could be a person doesn't necessarily want to walk the, the path of healing right now. They just want somebody to be there with them. Somebody to, to, to walk a portion of that, that journey with them, knowing that they're loved. You know, somebody is there. Somebody sees them. Somebody hears them. Somebody loves them. And that to me is love. We aren't forcing our beliefs upon somebody else. We aren't forcing our opinions onto somebody else. And it, cause that is where too, you know, I feel like that's ego creeping up because I know so much better than that person does. That's disempowering to them. And it isn't good for our own soul. And it's, it's, it, it elevates us. Um, we perceive that it elevates us, that I am so much better than this person because I can recognize that they need this as if it's my place to dictate what somebody else needs. No. If or when somebody is ready for healing, I help them if they want my help. And if part of my, my experience as a human being and as a spiritual being is to walk in grace, to walk in love with somebody else along a portion of their journey, so be it. So yeah, I just would like to encourage us all to one, recognize that the words that we speak rest squarely upon our own souls. Every time we're spewing hatred, it's on us. The, we may be sending that energy out, but it is right here. The, the, the weight of it is on our own soul. Every time we're putting somebody down, every time we're saying something derogatory, that's on us. And you know the old adage, you point a finger at somebody, there's three more pointing back at you. So when we're judging others. So in those moments, if we can just stop 
and say, you know what, I'm going to operate from a place of love. Or you're getting ready to, to, you know, maybe go in for a job interview or you're going to meet somebody new. Get in a state of love. If you know you're going to see somebody at a party that you don't necessarily care a whole lot for, get in a place of love. In a place of love, you know, you may find that you patch things up. Or if nothing else, they're not penetrating your good time. You get to enjoy yourself without all the yuck stuff. Um, you can remove yourself from that toxicity. You don't have to stay there. You can get to the place of love more often if you choose to. Be consciously aware of what you're saying, what you're thinking, what you're doing. Turn it back to love. Find a way to come back to love. And I think that, you know, the more that we do when we are in that state of love, then we share it. Just like I spoke of earlier, opening up the door, complimenting a complete stranger, and then it raises their vibration, then they pay it forward. Or, you know, maybe it's easier to um, go home to a house full of kids and taking care of everybody, and you're just not quite as stressed because somebody just lifted your spirits, your spirits. So let's pay it forward. Let's share the love, especially right now. Um, we could really use we could really use more. So to each and every one of you, I thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this episode. If you have any questions, comments, hopefully lovingly, um, feel free to reach out to me. My email is info at soulspirational.com. My website is soulspirational.com. So until next time, thank you, be well, and namaste.